everybody, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here with our series, The Key Components of Revival. Remember, many people talk about revival, but is it an actual move of God? There are key components, or I like to say ingredients, to bake up the recipe of revival. And that's what this series is all about. Today, on episode two, I want to talk about the prayer of the righteous, because no revival will take place without prayer. Revival begins with prayer. It continues with prayer. And Lord willing, revival will never stop because of prayer. Unfortunately, many revivals do come to an end because of the lack of prayer. Prayer is really the foundation of any spiritual thing in our walk with the Lord. Without prayer, there is no foundation. And when there is a corporate group of people that are praying, interceding, praying into a city, a region, into the things of God, then that prayer becomes like a combustive uh, realm that's ready to just explode. So when the man, woman of God, the evangelist comes into town, because there's already been a realm of prayer, a foundation of prayer, now, boom, when that match is lit, it strikes, it hits, bam, everything shifts and it makes it easy. When prayer is absent, revival is difficult. When prayer is absent, many times there's religion. Let me tell you, when you do not have a constant life of prayer, which means intimacy with God, then your heart will become stone cold, then your heart can become hardened. But when your prayer life is red hot on fire, like the coals of fire. When your prayer life is red hot on fire in intimacy and adoration, full surrender with Jesus, then that is a personal revival, which will eventually overflow into a corporate revival. Yes, revival first starts with me. Yes, revival first starts with you. But that personal revival must always trickle over or overflow to a corporate revival. Can I get an amen? The word of God here says in Acts chapter 2 verse 1, When a day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. What were they doing? Were they just fellowshipping? Were they doing Bible studies? Were they just talking about, oh, the greatest movie from Disney, Pixar, Netflix? Were they playing video games? No, they were all together in one place with one purpose, which is prayer. They were praying for 10 days. And as they were praying, having this spiritual prayer meeting gathered, all of a sudden the fire of God fell. You will not have a move of God if you're not able to move God's heart. And prayer is moving the heart of God closer to mankind. Prayer pulls down heaven. Prayer is what moves God's heart to become one with your heart. And when you move the heart of God, then you will eventually move the hand of God. Because outbursts, manifestations of revival is God's heart and God's hand stretched out. When the hand of God is stretched out over you, then that is a move of God. Let me tell you, can you move God? Yes, we as people, we can actually move God. Of course, the word of God says that I will not go forward unless you go, but who here knows that where you go, God also goes. If you don't want revival, God's not gonna give you revival. If you don't want a move of God, then he's not gonna move and step in. Let me tell you, God wants you to move his heart and his hand by so much worship, prayer, adoration, surrender unto the Lord, that you're actually able to pull on heaven. You're able to move the angels in to a region. You're able to call believers, gather people from all around. And now all of creation begins to gather to this phenomenon, which is called revival. Really, revival is a concentrated area and time of God's power and presence. I'm going to repeat that again. Revival is a concentrated time and area of God's manifested power and presence. Yes, God is omnipresent, but his presence is not manifested everywhere. The key is to get the power of God, the presence of the Lord, God's literal being to be somewhere. And many times religion, tradition, worldliness, carnality, it blocks the fullness of God's presence. Yes, 
We will not experience the fullness until we die and go to heaven. Absolutely. However, Jesus said, pray like this, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth, right here, right now, on earth as it is in heaven, right here, right now, wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, and every church, ministry, every corporation that is under a man, woman, a God, that is under a believer, that's supposed to be your realm, your domain of God's kingdom. So prayer is what births things. You see here in the word of God, James chapter five, verse 16, the prayer of a righteous person has a great power as it's working. Other translations say, the prayer of the righteous availeth much. Other translations say, the prayers of the righteous prevail over everything. Your prayers are powerful. Revival without prayer is like a bomb without a detonator. And the prayer life is the detonator. Revival is the bomb. Get ready to go to thebomb.com. When you pray, shh, the fuse, boom, explosive power. We need to have a foundation of prayer because it prevails over much, because it avails over much, because it is what pushes out the forces of darkness and it is what prepares the ground. Prayer is the preparation and prayer also is the production of revival. There's a story about a man named Father Nash. In the Great Awakening of America, this man named Father Nash, he was the intercessor, the assigned intercessor for a great evangelist named Charles Finney. You see, Father Nash would go to certain cities, towns, regions ahead of Charles Finney. And Father Nash would book a room with one or two other prayer warriors and they would pray, travail, moan and groan, believing for breakthrough in the spirit as they're praying ahead of the evangelist. They would go ahead of the man of God, Charles Finney, and they would pray and tear down the spiritual strongholds corporately so that when evangelist Charles Finney came into town, it was easy. The miracles, the salvations, the responses to the gospel, it was easy. It was like butter because that's what prayer does. Here's a story here. It says, on one occasion, when I got to town to start a revival, a lady contacted me who ran a boarding house. She said, Brother Finney, do you know of a Father Nash? He and two other men has been at my boarding house for the last three days, but they haven't eaten a bite of food. I opened the door and I peeped in at them because I could hear them groaning and I saw them down on their faces. They had been like this for three days, lying prostrate on the floor and groaning. Oh, uh, uh, I thought something awful must have happened to them. I was afraid to go in and I didn't know what to do. Would you please come and see about them, Brother Finney? And Brother Finney says, no, it isn't necessary. They have a spirit of travail in prayer. Father Nash and these two other gentlemen, they were locked in the room. They didn't eat and they were prostrate on the floor, groaning, Ugh. the spirit of travail. That type of prayer, birthing intercession, birthing prayer that came upon them and they were travailing in that room. My goodness, we need that type of prayer again in America. Without the spirit of travail, groaning, moaning, birthing intercession, many times there will not be revival. I've seen this and experienced this in different moves, revivals, conferences that we've done. When a spirit of travail comes upon the room or upon a person or a group of people, then bam, God's about to take this revival to the next level. Why? Because it's the broken heart of God. It's the weeping with Jesus. It is the crying. It's the crying out. It's the crying out for more. <clears throat> it's being so broken, so desperate. And you're feeling the agonizing prayers of the Lord. 
in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus' last prayer, the prayer of the high priest, he felt the agonizing prayer. He was in intercession and he began to sweat blood because of the agonizing, the burden of prayer, the burden, the pressure of all that was being experienced in that moment. Do you want a mantle of prayer like Father Nash? Do you want to agonize, travail, die in the flesh? Do you want to be prostrate? Do you want to birth with a spirit of intercession in the place of prayer? Revival will not take place without the preparation of prayer. Prayer makes the grounds fertile, moist, soft. Prayer causes the hearts to become soft. Prayer causes the spiritual atmosphere to become combustive, to become ready. Imagine a room is filled with gasoline or with fumes. Psss. Imagine this whole room is filled with gasoline, with fumes. All of a sudden you light a match. What's going to happen? Explosive detonative power. That is revival. That's what God wants to do in our lives. But are you and I willing to pay the price in prayer? God will not give us a move of God if we're not even able to move our lips in prayer. Can we pray? Can we pray for the president? Can we pray for the White House? Can we pray for our region, for our city? Can we be gatekeepers and pray in the Holy Spirit? Everything starts continues and Lord willing doesn't end or continues on with and because of prayer. Revival is a product of prayer. Is there a company of people that are praying? Are you part of a prayer group? Let me tell you, prayer groups are some of the smallest and least attended type of meetings in the church. You go for the meeting for healing, for miracles. You go for the meeting where the famous preacher evangelist comes. But what about prayer meetings? Do not despise the grandmothers. Gray, white, curly hair, walking in with the canes that are praying heaven down. Do not despise the praying mamas. I am a product of a praying mama. Do not despise the prayer room. If you close and lock the prayer room, then there will be no revival especially a sustained revival. You want revival to be pure? There must be prayer. There must be intercession. Most people think that revival is in the stadiums, large crowds, mass gatherings. No, 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 Nancy. P revival is in the prayer room. Revival is in the prayer gatherings. Do not neglect the gift and the privilege of prayer. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here with episode two of the series, The Key Components of Revival. And without the prayer of the righteous, there will be no revival. A move of God happens because people are pulling on heaven, moving the heart of God, the hand of God, to manifest wherever they are. I pray that God will release his prayer language within your spirit, to bubble out of your mouth, and that God will use you to be an intercessor like Father Nash to see many souls get saved in the mighty name of Jesus. May you catch the spirit of prayer and travail wherever you are. God bless you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. Let me know in the comment section what spoke to you, what ministered to you, and if you receive this mantle of prayer. Remember, Jesus said, my father's house will be a house of what? Miracles? Will be a house of what? Teaching and preaching? No, it'll be a house of prayer for all the nations. God bless you. This is Dr. Ben Lim. Until next time.